If you will be living on campus, chances are you will have to move in. If you do not move in, you will not be living on campus. You will be somewhere else. There are a few things you need to know before you move in so you are ready when the big day arrives. Are you ready? First, visit usf.edu slash housing, select residential experience, then moving in. You will see web pages listed for each move in period. Select the link that applies to you and begin reading the information provided. We recommend reading from left to right, top to bottom. In this way, you will enrich your mind with move-in information. Being informed is important. We know that because we read it somewhere. Second, get renter's insurance. I'm a thunderstorm. This is not required, but it is important. If something happens to your stuff and you do not have renter's insurance, you will not be reimbursed for your stuff. If you do have renter's insurance, you will get a check in the mail so you can buy new stuff. Lastly, go shopping for things you need. You might not know what you need. That's okay, we do. On the move-in page you just read, there is a link to the move-in checklist. You can acquire the items on the list, then check the boxes to indicate that you have acquired each item. Good job, now you are one step closer to living the bull's life. When you move in, you might notice some imperfections in your room. Imperfections, though rare, are to be expected, as no one is perfect. No room is perfect. Are you perfect? If you notice any damage or worn areas of your room, speak with your resident assistant, or RA, so they can help you note this on your room condition form. The room condition form is a form that indicates the condition of your room. That's where the name comes from. Remember to add notes to this form so you aren't charged for room damage when you move out. A picture is worth a thousand words. This is not backed up by a mathematical formula, but it is something people say. Do not ask me why. Because I am an actor in a video and cannot respond to your questions. It is a good idea to take photos of any pre-existing damage or wear in your living space. A photo will help your RA figure out when the damage took place and decide what further action to take. If something becomes damaged while you are living on campus, please submit a maintenance request. Our maintenance staff is friendly, prompt, and will help you with any issues that may arise. Visit usf.edu slash housing and select maintenance requests on the homepage to get started. We want every student to feel safe and comfortable while they live the bull's life. Jessica Barron, Sierra Rose, Elisa Goldberg, Max Morinelli, Kayla Williams, Matt Satchwell, Burley Gomez, Jennifer Drew Bear, Taylor Finke, Stephanie Chalkman, Jeremy Lamberti, Sky Jenkins, David Castigiano, Ethan Long. Wednesday, July 24th, 2019. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live! Welcome everyone, this is USF Housing Live. I'm your host, Jessica Barron, with Housing and Residential Education at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto, best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Tonight's episode is Study Abroad. A reminder to everyone joining us live that we're here to answer your questions so you're ready to live the bull's life. If you have a question, no matter where or how you're watching, just type it in the comments and we'll answer you in real time. Well, let's go ahead and meet tonight's guests. Joining us tonight is the Health Promotion Specialist from the Center for Student Wellbeing. She holds a master's degree in public health with a concentration in health behavior and health education and oversees the REACH Peer Health Education Program, who delivers wellness programming to students around campus. Welcome to the show, Kathleen Koviak. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, Kathleen. 
Joining me tonight is Snow White, who works at Education Abroad here at USF and is making her second appearance on USF Housing Live. Let's welcome Snow White. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here, Snow. Tell us, tell us who you are <laughs> and what you do here at USF. Yeah, my name is Snow White and I am the Student Programs Coordinator for the Education Abroad Office. Um, my main role is to recruit students, so I run all of our events and I run our student recruitment team as well as advise students. So I get to just sit down and talk to students all day about studying abroad and answer questions, help them find programs and, you know, go all out with that. So now, studying abroad is something that I know a lot of students find very interesting. When we say education abroad, what exactly do we mean? Yeah, so that's going to be anything that um, is related to international travel for USF students. So not a family vacation, but anything related to what they would be doing um, in their roles here at USF. So it could be going on a study abroad program with us. It could be doing an internship abroad. It could be going to a conference abroad, um, doing a service learning project, or pretty much anything else that is um, related to international travel as a USF student. So what types of programs are available for study abroad? I'm sure there's lots of options. There right? are a lot of options for students. Um, so we'll kind of break it down in a few different um, types. So we have our faculty-led programs. Those are led by USF faculty. They're usually shorter term, so like a week over spring break to six to ten weeks over the summer. Um, we then have exchange programs. Those are going to be um, full semester programs where students will attend a full semester at one of our exchange partner universities around the world. Um, we also have affiliates. So those are study abroad affiliates that offer just a wider range of program options um, all over the world with all kinds of different courses. Just a wider variety than um, what we directly offer with our USF programs. And then um, students can also do internships and they can do service projects. Um, those are pretty much like the main things that students are doing abroad. So sometimes when students here study abroad, it can be a little daunting because they think of the cost. Yes. But are there any scholarships or other funding opportunities available to, to students? Absolutely. So right off the bat, students can use their financial aid. So we highly encourage students to kind of start there first, um, as a lot of USF students do receive financial aid. And then there's a ton of different scholarship opportunities. So our office um, does have some scholarships, so we encourage students to just come in and ask us about those as they're learning about their study abroad options. Um, a lot of our affiliate partners will also offer scholarships. We work with uh, the Global Citizens Project who offers scholarships. There's a lot of departments on campus as well that will offer scholarships, so we encourage students to talk to their academic advisors about those. And then we also partner with the Office of National Scholarships. So we highly recommend students go chat with them as well. Um, there's a number of very competitive but very great um, national scholarships that USF students um, could be eligible for. So one of the things about studying abroad is that there's so many places to go. What locations will actually be offered this year? Yeah, there are a ton of locations for USF students, too many to even list off. Um, but what I can tell you is that if there's somewhere you've always wanted to go, we probably offer it. Um, we have students on just about every continent. Um, students are, you know, they're in Asia, they're in Europe. We have a, a few programs in the Middle East, Africa, Central and South America, the Caribbean. So pretty much anywhere students want to go, maybe not Antarctica, but anywhere else we can try to find a program for students. The world is literally their oyster, The right? world is their oyster, yep. Snow, can first year stu students study abroad or who can actually study abroad? Absolutely, anybody can study abroad. That's what we like to say. Um, so the first time a student would probably be able to study abroad would be spring break, um, kind of your first year. So that would probably be one of um, those first options as well as that first summer after you finished your first year here on campus. And then you can study abroad any time in between there, um, just not that final semester um, before you graduate. So any time in between there, and there's no perfect time for students to study abroad. So just talk to your academic advisor, come talk to us, and we'll find the right time for you. So now I definitely got a chance to study abroad when I was in school, yeah. and I loved my experience. I went to Florence, Italy. What do you hear from other students who have studied abroad? What do they take from that? Yeah, there are so many reasons that students study abroad. There's personal reasons, professional reasons, academic reasons, um, but I've never had a student come back and told me they hated it. <laughs> but no, there's so many reasons that students study abroad and they love it. Um, there's just so many opportunities to learn different things, meet new people, experience new cultures, um, and just have an, an amazing experience abroad. Uh, there's a lot of students at USF who have never been abroad before, and this is their first opportunity, and so we, uh, we love having them. 
Snow, are there any on-campus events happening with Education Abroad, and when are they? Absolutely. We have a ton of events for you. Um, just to list off a couple of them, September 10th is going to be our program launch. That's when all of our USF programs are going to go live on our website, and you can actually start applying for them. So we're going to have a big event in the MSC atrium. If you're just walking by through the building that day, stop by, come check us out, come start asking some questions and uh, learn about our programs. And then if we have any athletes watching, we're going to have our athletics fair in the athletics building on September 18th. So again, if you're walking by, you'll definitely see us. Come stop in and say hey. And then our big education abroad fair is going to be September 26th. That's going to be in the MSC ballroom from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Again, if you're in the building, come in and say hi. If you've even thought about studying abroad, um, that's going to be like one-stop shopping for students to find pretty much anything that they need in regards to study abroad. So if you want to talk to students who have been before, if you want to talk to faculty, if you want to talk to the Center for Student Wellbeing about going abroad, financial aid, pretty much anyone, even um, the Office of National Scholarships will be there as well. So anything that you need in regards to study abroad, it'll be all in one place. We highly encourage students to come out there and see us. Snow, so you mentioned a couple of dates, but if some students yes. didn't have a pen and paper and didn't you know, catch what, what dates they were, where can they find the information about upcoming events? Definitely. You can check out our website um, or just come on into our office. That's the best way to get connected with study abroad. Um, come in, say, hey, we'll give you a flyer, or we can just meet with you right there and just start talking about all those options. So some students, you know, think, oh, okay, I'm going to do study abroad, but they want to know one thing. Where do students live when they study abroad? Where do they live? So there's a ton of different options for students um, to live when they go abroad, and everything that students are going to do is going to vary on the type of program that they're on and where they're at and how long they're there. So some students are staying in hotels, some are staying in dorms, some are in apartments, some are even in homestays where they're um, living with a host family in that country. and students love those options and the families usually feed you too. <laughs> oh, every, everything with food, it sounds great. I'm Absolutely. Sure. So lots of different options. It's just going to depend where you're going and what you're doing. Snow, so where can a student actually start the process? Uh, they can come into our office. That's the best way to come in um, and just let us know you're interested in studying abroad. That's going to be the Marshall Student Center, MSC 3301. That's our gateway office. You can come in anytime you want. Just walk on in. You don't need an appointment. And myself uh, or one of our student recruiters will sit down with you and help you find a study abroad program. So we have a viewer named Adrina. She has a question for you. She asks, right. um, where can you find a listing of the programs there are abroad? I think you mentioned this earlier, but they yeah, probably absolutely. just tuned in. So I would say start on our website. Um, if you pretty much just Google USF study abroad, you'll get to our website. Um, if you click on types of programs, you can look at uh, the different types of programs that I just kind of broke down, or you can go to our program discovery and you can see all of the programs there. However, the one thing is all of our summer programs are not on there yet, um, so just keep that in mind that all of our summer programs will be live on September 10th. So you can see a small sampling of programs um, for summer 2019. You can see where our students went and what programs they were going on. But some of those will change and we'll have some new additions on that list as well. So take a look. Don't get your heart set on anything <laughs> yet. And then just come in and chat with us and we'll let you know um, if that program will be offered again or um, come back on check on September 10th and they'll all be up there. Snow, and for any students who are still, you know, debating on the fence about study abroad, what would you tell them? Just do it. Just come in and ask. At least just come in and ask. Um, uh, study abroad is possible for every student. So don't discredit it. Don't um, just think, I can't afford it or it's not for me. I've never been abroad before. I can't do this. Just come in and ask. Talk to us about it um, because we want to get you abroad and we'll do what we can to help you find the right program, find the right courses. Um, if you think, my major, I can't study abroad because of this major, don't listen to that. Come in and talk to us first. Um, just come in and ask, and we'll help you find a program. And I'm more than happy to tell any students about my experiences abroad. And we have so many students um, who have come back and are student recruiters or global ambassadors that have gotten involved after their study abroad experience. And they would love to share with you about their study abroad program and the amazing experiences that they've had. Snow, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. It's time for us to take a short break, but hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to roll a video with some info about studying abroad. You don't want to miss it. We'll be back with more USF Housing Live right after this. USF Education Abroad has programs in over 25 countries. If you are enrolled in one of these programs, you will be studying abroad. Like the name suggests, studying abroad means taking classes for credit in countries that are abroad. 
Past education abroad programs have taken students to Paris, London, Italy, India, Australia, and many more countries. You know, abroad. Education abroad programs are quite popular here at USF. About 1,500 students participate each year. If you are unsure about studying abroad or have questions about a particular program, Globe Bull Ambassadors can share valuable information about studying abroad with you. Information is key. While information will not allow you to open locked doors, information will allow you to make informed decisions. Do not try to open a locked door by informing it. Talking to a door will make people look at you strangely. Students can participate in education abroad programs during regular semesters or during winter, summer, and spring breaks. Programs can span from one week to one year. A week is equivalent to seven days, while a year is equivalent to 365 days. A year is much longer than a week, 358 days to be exact. Before you leave for your study abroad trip, you will need a passport. A passport is a government approved form of identification that proves citizenship. If you do not have a passport, you cannot leave the country. If you cannot leave the country, you will not be able to participate in the education abroad program. Allow ample time for your passport to get approved, as it can take up to eight weeks. Using the information stated earlier in this video, eight weeks is equivalent to 56 days. There are plenty of financial aid packages that you can apply for to help you fund your trip. The financial aid office can help you find these packages. As you might have noticed, financial aid is in their name. Additionally, the Education Abroad office can answer any questions regarding education abroad, including financial aid. Again, Education Abroad is in their name. By studying abroad, you can experience new cultures, make new friends, and broaden your views on the world around you. Get ready to live the bull's life abroad. Welcome back everyone. This is USF Housing Live. I'm Jessica Barron, you're not, and it's time to chat with Kathleen Kobiak from the Center for Student Wellbeing. Kathleen, tell us who you are and what you do here at USF. Yeah, so I am the Health Promotion Specialist with our office. Um, so I oversee a lot of our programming that we do. Our programs encompass behaviors that um, students will want to adopt while they're in college. So talking about stress management, time management, sleep, sexual health, um, substance abuse, safety. Uh, so we provide workshops, presentations, awareness campaigns about all of those topics, giving students what they need, um, skills and information and resources to make the best decisions that will benefit themselves now, um, whether that's here or abroad, um, as well as in the future. Kathleen, we've always heard, you know, your health is your wealth, but what do, what do we actually mean when we say wellness? Yeah, so we like to think of wellness very holistically. So rather than just not being sick or when you think of your physical health, so exercise and diet, that's important too, but also encompassing your mental health, so how you deal with your emotions, how you manage stress, um, as well as your social connections, how you relate to other people, the relationships that you form and the support that you have from that. Um, so we want to give students the tools and skills to thrive in all of those different areas. Kathleen, students and families may be feeling some stress as they move in through this major life transition, coming to campus, moving in for the first time. But how can they actually stay balanced? Definitely. So that's totally normal. I think the important thing is to just recognize all of those different feelings that are going on, both the students and their families, um, to name it and own it, whether it's excited or nervous or scared, um, or both, right? all at once, yeah. you know, it could change from minute to hour. Um, so just being open about how they're feeling and what's going on and how they're processing it all um, and, and sharing that and making sure that they're able to support one another through that transition. Um, I think it's important that students and families talk about how they aim to communicate after the student moves in and what that relationship will look like, um, whether it's you know checking in by phone every day or, or through email or text, um, whatever kind of works best for the relationship and, and touching base and um, maintaining that. And, and that may change over the course of the semester as the student 
um, gets more involved and adapts. So, um, so being flexible and, and talking through all of that. Yeah, and I think moving on to campus with the roller coaster of emotions is something we can all relate to. For Snow, sure. do, can you share maybe your experience when you first moved on to campus? Yeah, the day I moved on to campus, um, my roommate wasn't there yet. It was just me. I didn't felt like I didn't know anybody, and we had a Ben and Jerry's on campus, so I walked over there at night and uh, cried a little bit because I was all alone. But Aww. then I made friends and connected, and it was mm -hmm. all fine, and it ended up being such a great experience. But it, it's funny to look back on now. Definitely. Yeah, you think yeah. something you grow from too, right, Kathleen? Definitely, definitely, and that's totally natural. Some, you know, a lot of students will experience homesickness at some point during the transition, whether it's the first night and when they're missing those comforts of home, or it might hit them a little bit later in the semester when um, they're missing you know, friends and family back home. So um, sharing those feelings with someone that they trust and getting involved and having a routine is a great way to manage homesickness. Um, but having students know that if those feelings do become a little bit too overwhelming and they can't feel like they can handle it anymore, there's always people at the counseling center that they can make an appointment to talk with um, and help them process all of that. Kathleen, we talked about a little bit about homesickness, but what are some other common challenges students face when they arrive on campus? Yeah, so lots of different things. Um, I think we hear a lot from students. They're worried about how they're going to make friends or fit in. So uh, we want students to know there's lots of different ways to make friends and get involved. Um, joining student organizations, um, getting in touch with people on their hall, just not being afraid to invite someone to dinner or to walk around campus together. Um, and then coming to a big school like USF, it can be daunting to navigate your way around, um, to find parking, to um, manage the you know, jargon that USF has about the different terms for, um, for the buildings and things like that and, and what the bulls use to refer to different things. So um, it's taking time to try and become familiar with those and know that it does get easier as time goes on and you learn those things. Um, so just um, taking the steps that they need to do to kind of build that routine now that they will have some more free time and making sure they're making times for things that they enjoy and, um, and make them happy. Yeah, I definitely remember my first time stepping foot on campus and thinking it was the biggest place I've ever been to and that I was going to get lost. And I did get lost yeah. the first week. <laughs> you know, that's normal. But then, you, like you said, you start to learn where everything's at and everything's a lot closer than you think. Exactly, right. I would take like the long way to get yeah. to places for the longest time and then realize like, oh, there's this other way that I Shortcuts, could. Shortcuts, right? <laughs> cuts on five minutes. And so you learn things like that. <laughs> Snow, we actually have a viewer who has a question for you um, regarding studying abroad. His name is Carlos, and he asks, are international students eligible for study abroad programs, and what about scholarships for them? Absolutely. Um, I love that question. So the one thing I didn't mention is any of the USF programs, so unfortunately not our affiliates, but our USF programs, so anything that says USF in London or um, USF in Portugal, it has that USF name on it or our exchange programs, um, all students will receive in-state tuition for the tuition portion of those programs, including international students. So keep that in mind, we love having international students on our programs, and you'll get that in-state tuition rate. And then when it comes to scholarships, just come chat with us. Um, that's probably the easiest thing is I'll help you do some research as an international student. You're going to have some different options. You might not be able to use financial aid and things like that. So again, just come chat with us, and we'll, um, we'll do some research with you. Awesome. Thank you, Snow. And, and once again, what's the website where they can visit if, if they have any more questions? Yeah, just Google USF Study Abroad. It'll be the first one that comes up, um, and you'll see it. You can get all of the information right there. Awesome. Snow, thank you so much. And yeah, thank Carlos, you. thank you so much Thanks, for that Carlos. question. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, if students, if you have any more questions, feel free to send them in, and we'll answer you on the show. So, Kathleen, another question I have for you. What does good self-care look like to a student? Yeah, so that's just, you know, bring it back to the basics. So start with a good night's sleep. So at least about seven hours, we recommend that students try to get every night, um, which can seem like a lot, but we know that that's kind of the optimum that will have students um, feeling their best, have enough energy throughout the day, being focused in their classes, being productive. 
Um, and then in addition to a good night's sleep, you want to be eating uh, balanced meals, getting lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, it can be tempting to have pizza at every meal in the dining hall, but you know, just have that in moderation. Um, getting enough exercise, whatever means of activity that is fun for you, if that's doing a cycle class, if it's playing basketball, if it's jogging around campus, you know, there's lots of different options that USF has for being active. Um, and making time um, for other things that you enjoy too. So being with friends, listening to music, um, reading a good book, um, all those things that encompass good self-care. Awesome. I'm definitely guilty a little mm -hmm. bit of, you know, <laughs> choosing the pizza a little bit too much than I should, you know. But Everything it, in moderation, you know. You, definitely. Yeah. You live and you learn. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen, can you share some popular resources available to students that will support their overall well-being? Yeah, we've got lots of resources on campus that help students um, maintain their health and wellness. So one is the wellness centers. Uh, we have them in the Marshall Student Center on the first floor and the FIT, um, which is the recreational complex in the village. Uh, and it's on the second floor there. So they have massage chairs, nap pods, sleep packs, fruit, sexual health supplies. So students can pop in there, pick up what they need, relax in a massage chair, feel refreshed and recharged um, to go out their day. Um, there's also the counseling center that I mentioned. They're a great resource that has drop-in groups and individual counseling. Um, student Health Services, I know you guys did an episode on that, and um, to get all of your physical health needs done and um, whoever gets sick or injured. Um, and then there's Success and Wellness Coaching where you can talk one-on-one -on -one with a coach about any goals that you might have and, um, and they'll set you up with a plan to keep you motivated and hold you accountable to meeting those goals. Kathleen, we actually have a viewer who has a question for you. Great. Um, her name is Susanna, and she asks, <laughs> Kathleen, what kind of events does your office offer to offer for self-care? So we do a lot. So um, we are always um, in the residence halls. So we do um, Wellness Wednesdays um, at different locations throughout the year um, in the residential areas on campus. So we'll bring, um, we have DIY sugar and salt scrubs. We have this like play your stress away um, type event where we bring in games and coloring and um, other activities. We have Legos and like a beanbag toss and just want students to take their mind off of uh, their stress and, and come and play and relax and recognize that these are all good parts of self-care. Um, another popular event that we host is uh, Pause and Relax where we bring therapy dogs to campus a couple times a semester, usually during exam time, that high peak stress point. Um, and we give students the opportunity to just hang out with these um, fun dogs and pet and play with them. And um, especially students that might be missing their pets back home, it's a good break and um, get that, you know, love. So, so that's really fun too and students always enjoy that. Thank you, Kathleen, and thank you, Susanna, for that question. If you have any more, keep sending them in. <laughs> Kathleen, why is it so important that students prioritize their wellness and adopt healthy behaviors while they're in college? Yeah, so this is kind of a critical time, right? So you're um, probably on your own for the first time. You don't have the structure that you had in high school as much, um, and you're making these decisions. So to kind of set yourself up for that success, it's really important to prioritize your health and well-being and, and adopting these behaviors now because uh, we know that the behaviors that young adults do adopt at this time in their lives are ones that they're likely to stick with and maintain throughout their future. So um, it is an important time and in addition to that it's also um, known to help their academic success as well. So students who feel better, who get more sleep, who, um, who take care of their well-being in all those different ways. Um, and manage their stress will do better uh, in their classes and um, succeed academically as well. Kathleen, I'm sure you can agree that um, time management is one of those things that is constantly mm -hmm. changing throughout the rest of your life. So it's good to practice now, right, before it gets even busier. For sure, right? Figure out the method that works best for you when it comes to making a schedule and managing your time. So whether that's you know, the old school planner that you write everything down, making to-do list, or if you're more tech savvy and can do everything on your phone or computer, um, setting reminders for yourself, um, knowing when things are due and having all of those 
dates um, organized um, is a great way to, you know, once you get your syllabus, to have all those dates in your calendar at the beginning of the semester so um, assignments don't pop up on you <laughs> unexpectedly and, um, you, and you are able to better prioritize and, and then figuring out where, in addition to that, where you have room to do more of those fun activities and self-care activities. Like pause and relax, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah, schedule that in. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen, and how can students stay connected with your office to learn more about any upcoming events and programs that you host? Yeah, the best way is to follow us on social media, so we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram uh, at Wellness USF. Uh, so we'll post um, some tips as well as any information about our upcoming events. That'll all be on there. Um, we do have a BullSync page too. So for any students, once they get set up with BullSync, they can search Wellness and we'll be on there. They can like our page and we post on there um, about additional events that we have going on. And our website, usf.edu slash wellbeing, um, has additional information and resources. Kathleen, thank you so much for being on the show. It was a pleasure having you here Thanks today. Thanks so much. This is wonderful. Now it's time for some special announcements. Do you want to move in early and for free? Well, if you said yes, then you should consider volunteering for Bull Hall. Bull Hall is a tradition right here on campus. Every year on Grand Opening Day, Bulls volunteer to assist other students with the move-in process. Learn more and apply today at usf.edu slash housing. Education Abroad is hosting their program launch on September 10th from 10 to 3 in the MSC Atrium and the Fall Education Abroad Fair on September 26th from 10 to 3 in the MSC Ballroom. Be sure to attend to learn more about how you can study abroad. Do you want to win an iPad? Yeah, we thought so. Help us learn more about how we're doing and be entered to win an iPad for completing a survey about USF Housing Live. You can find the link right here in the description of this video. Well, that's just about all the time we have, but before we go, I want to remind you that USF Housing Live airs every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Join us for our next episode, How to College, on Wednesday, July 31st. You can watch at facebook.com slash USF Housing, the USF class of 2023 Facebook group, or in full 1080p high definition at youtube.com slash USF Housing. USF Housing Live is produced by Housing and Residential Education at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto is, best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Thank you to tonight's guests, Snow White and Kathleen Koviak for joining me this evening. Thank you to our production crew, to you our viewers, and of course, there's always just one last thing. Go Bulls! Good night everyone.